Hey, Magic Makers. I'm Mom Virella. And I'm CJ Peterson. Welcome to Magic Making Mischief. Get your wands to the ready because we solemnly swear oh, we're we up, up to no good. Right on. <laughs> Yay. So today we have the amazing voice actor, John Grimian. Nah. Hi. How are you? <laughs> good. Well, we've got Marissa. You've already had a couple in the back waiting to say hi. So Marissa. Oh, well, that's great. Well, thank you very much. Hi, Marissa. I know that Works Hard is also there. Oh, there she is. She's Yay. Like, Yay. She missed the She's like, I didn't get my notification. Yay, she got time. <laughs> I didn't want to know that it was going to be 1130. Um, yeah. If you're here, welcome. Um, we did do the time change today. So we're at 1130. And we're going to be staying there from now on. Or right. really. <laughs> One plus the layout coming up, but yes. So I'm your, I'm your guinea pig for the 1130 time change. <laughs> you're lucky you get the half hour extra, you know. Yeah, ha extra half hour of sleep this morning. Didn't have to get up quite so early. No, I'm kidding. There, yeah. <laughs> Of course, it kind of messed me up a little bit, but that's okay. We that's got it. All right. yeah. It's all sorted. Oh, well, so, so the email the email I got said, uh, yes, make sure to sign in at 10.45 p.m. I was like, are we doing this at 11 o'clock at night? What? What happened? And then oh, it was no, like, no. sign <laughs> in at, it's the old information. Yeah, sorry. And then it changed to 11, and then I was like, what? No, 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 come on. But Tell I'm me, glad, to, glad to be <laughs> here. I can't say that I'm too up on Harry Potter. Uh, <laughs> but Which We'll get you there. I, I, I don't know if you'd call me a Hufflepuff or a Snoople Dragon or whatever the heck they're called, but I, I what are they called? What are the houses? Uh, well, I'm Ravenclaw. Ravenclaw. I'm Slytherin. How do you how do we how do we decide what we are? How do, how do we decide? So there's there used it used to be called Pottermore, but now it's uh it's got a different name, Wizarding World of Harry Potter. So they've got a website. It's like their official Harry Potter website, and there's yeah. a sorting hat thing you go through to ask you questions, and then it sort you into which of the oh, gosh. houses you're supposed yeah. to I wonder, I wonder what I'd be. Okay, so if I like a little whiskey in my coffee, what does that make me, a Slytherin or something? Slytherin. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It might be a Gryffindor. I don't know. <laughs> We're excited. Yeah. She's not declared a house yet. All right. Yeah, I wasn't sure what I was, and I took it, and I am definitely hardcore Ravenclaw. Okay. Um, I, they're, they're the, we're the unique breed. Um, I trust you. Yeah, it doesn't okay. surprise me at all. <laughs> all right. I want my I own house. I want to start my own house. Can I start my own house or something? Sure. Or? The Grimian right. house. No, no, no. The Grimian house. Hey, actually, that no, sounds... wouldn't... no, it wouldn't be Grimian. It wouldn't be based on my last name. I'll have to think about this. Uh, uh, um, <laughs> snuggle bugs? How about that? <laughs> cuddle monkeys? I think I'm going to have a cuddle bug. <laughs> <laughs> Can I be a cuddle <laughs> monkey? <laughs> I like that one. Yeah, that yeah good. that's good. Cuddle <laughs> monkey, snuggle <laughs> bugs. <laughs> Oh, how about how about the grody coyotes? How about we could do that? No, I like the cuddle monkey one. All right, cuddle monkey. Band name. I think I could be. All right. I like the cuddle monkey one. That's what we'll do. Uh, right. Jillian says good morning. Good morning, Jillian. Jillian, good morning. Oh, Jillian, my friend Jillian, she's here. Works hard. Saw... Says she likes snuggle she likes snuggle bugs. <laughs> <laughs> I saw. I just saw Jillian at uh, Delta HCon. I see her at all the cons we go to. She's a great awesome. fan. So that's really great to see you, Jillian. Cool. Cheers. Water, yeah, well, water. I ran across you in multiple cons because I helped run Comic Cons. And yes, you did. Oh, wait, Marissa says that she is also Slytherin. Slytherin, yeah. all right. Um, <laughs> and so we've run across quite a few of them. Yeah. And so I'm super excited that I know that we're, we'll talk about it a little bit that we're going to meet another one together. So. Yes, we will. Yeah, we should. But we have, we have a lot, you have a lot that goes on because you're not just a voice actor. You're also like a theater actor. And I know that you've been in a couple commercials, which like, right. Yeah. I've done some, I've done, I've done a little bit of commercial work. I studied theater at Juilliard for a couple of years. I used to, I, and, and here at the high school for the performing arts here, in, which is now the kinder high school performing arts here in Houston, born and raised in Houston, right? Theater kids since I was a little tot. And then, um, uh, I got I got cut from Juilliard's program. I was in over my head. I was only 19 and 20 years old back then, and I didn't know what I was doing. It was it's a really heavy duty conservatory theater training program. It's Shakespearean training. So I wasn't I was more Saturday Night Live, you know, kind of like, you know. I just want to be on stage and have a good time. What is all this, uh, dig, you know, digging into folio texts and everything? And oh my so God. anyway, no, it's it's a longer story than that. But in retrospect, it was a great experience. But it was in New York City and Lincoln Center, and you're with all these incredible, uh, mm -hmm. talented people, and you just feel I was I was just overwhelmed. But I came back home and then uh, lived at home for a while. Decided what I wanted to do for school, and I've always I always you know was a little afraid of going only into theater because you can't make a living at it. It's very hard to make a living at it, even if you're famous, believe it or not. And um, 
like Tony Award winning actors would be in the unemployment line after winning a Tony. Wow. Ridiculous. <laughs> Ridiculous. And so, you know, I, I talked to my parents about it a lot growing up and I said, well, what else do you like to do? Well, I've always liked editing and making little movies with my Super 8 camera and and recording things with my friends and cutting them together and being all fun like that and performing and performing and doing voices and things like that. So I'm a voice actor. I'm a video editor. I went to UT film school to become a video editor. I've been doing that for a really long time here in town. I do videos for the medical center and for different oil and gas companies and stuff like that. And Houston's great for corporate work. So I do that and voiceover. So it's been a mixture over the years and I slowly got back into theater over time. I haven't done any theater since pre COVID. I mean, I really haven't been on stage since the lockdown, believe it or not, oh, really? but I've, but I've been instead just doing more voice work and going to conventions a lot, seeing fans and just taking a different approach. And I work mostly out of the house. So it's, it's a lot of fun. It works. I'm, I'm happy with it. And, uh, you know, that's, that's the long and the short of that, but yeah, I've been a theater kid since I, you know, been in theater since I was a kid. So did you do, do you sing, did you do musical theater at all? Oh. Oh, yeah. I've done tons of musicals. My favorite role is probably either Frank Butler in Annie Get Your Gun or Harold Hill in The Music Man. I played okay. Bialystok in The Producers. I was in South Pacific. I, I, I was with a, a, a repertory company here in Houston. They're no longer around. They're, they were called Masquerade Theater, and they were at the Hobby Center for the Performing Arts on their small stage. And um, yes, you're right. Works hard. Um, multiple revenue streams. Key for survival. You're right. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, being a voice actor is not is not just this. You, you, we're not living in mansions. We're not we're not living large in our Lamborghinis just from doing anime. Trust me, it's not, that's that's uh, you do need to make a living. Yeah, absolutely. Um, having more options and having different irons in the fire is a fun way to be. It's a fun way to work. And I haven't been full time nine to five since. Oh gosh, I, I was well. I was beyond nine to five. I was I was doing burning the candle at both ends when I was a video editor full time. That takes up a lot of your time. That's a lot of late hours. <laughs> so, yeah, especially in the 90s when the Internet was a baby and nobody had nobody had um, edit on your phone or, what, or your laptop. Yeah. Any of that stuff. No, no, I, that that grew in 10 years. It became one, from one thing to another completely. So, yeah, um, I love having different ways of making money and, and having artistic experiences and things like that. But so voice acting is only one of them. So you're not just voice acting, though. You're not just editing. Right. You're not just theater acting. But you actually, I found out last time I interviewed you, you play the drums. Oh, yeah. And that's that's my wand. My drumstick is my <laughs> wand. Yay. That's so <laughs> pretty cool, too. Yeah. Yeah. Are you in a band at all? Or is it just... No, theater? you know, I was in a band for a little while. I was uh, The last band I was in was an 80s cover band. So I have this electronic drum kit that... Oh, fun. Electronic drums are great because you don't bug the neighbors. You don't damage your hearing. You can turn it up and down in the... You know, you're not the loudest. You can wail on it at a club and it won't be the loudest thing in the room because they can just turn it down because you're piped into one thing on the board. Mm -hmm. um, so you can dial in your... Here's my Journey kit. Here's my Depeche Mode kit. Here's my Madonna kit. <laughs> Here's my here's my Kenny Loggins kit. Here's my kit just for walk like an Egyptian. Here's my you know whatever. Nice. So, yeah, yeah. It's it's great. It's really cool. It's uh, it's over there in the corner. But um, yeah, it's a good conversation piece. You started voice acting in like 1999, right? Yes. Uh, well, I, I I had done some commercials, a few commercials before I started doing anime voice acting. Um, <clears throat> yep. Yeah. But it was uh, but it was um. In the late 90s, ADV Films, which is now Sentai, had uh, they were lucky if they were doing in the in the mid 90s. If they when once they started, they were doing only like two titles a month, and they thought that was big big time, right? They did so they did all the like Golden Boy and Evangelion, and they did all those really cool shows in the mid 90s, and then they they started growing in stature. Anime was still like a little nerd in the corner of the party. It wasn't a big mainstream thing like it is today, of course, but. It was Japan version back then, right? Yeah, so they started. They started doing. Um, they got more titles and more licensing in the late '90s, and they needed a bigger pool of talent. They needed more actors to come in and do, do more shows. And so they just started putting out want ads in the paper, in, oh, wow. the, in the back in the back of the Houston Press, you know, or or online or wherever you would look online. Um, back then is so late '90s. Yeah, and so we all just showed up. A bunch of Houston actors just showed up. Mm -hmm. And started doing mostly stage actors started showing up. We sat in a room like we were auditioning for a commercial one by one. And we would go in and meet Matt Greenfield and we would 
he'd throw up a little anime. He'd say, go for it. We would come up with a voice. We would do a few things. He would give us some direction. And we either got a role and got a call back to do a role or we didn't. And I was one of the people that got a call back for a role. And then once you got in, you were called very often because other directors would meet you or they would call you for different roles and different shows. And so they, they just expanded their pool of acting talent. Mm -hmm. And that was really getting in on the ground floor, to be honest. Yeah. Um, and I'm glad that we did that because today it's such a mainstream thing and it's so much more competitive and everybody wants to do it. It's so much in the spotlight right now that it's, I think when you audition, it's much more high pressure. It's mm -hmm. much more, oh, I got to bring my A game because everybody's online going to see my hero or going to see me in this or see me in that. And when you did it a long time ago, it was just, nah, I'm going to say, well, I got to pick up my lunch, my dry cleaning. I'm going to go record some anime and I'm going to go, you know. Oh, wow. It was this, it was a job. It was a side job. I've got a job today. I've got to go record some anime. Had you actually ever watched anime before you started doing it? No, like, the, only an, the only anime I've ever really seen that I can call anime was like Speed Racer back in the day when I was growing up, right? <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> I, learned, I can't I remember was, who we're talking to, but I learned that Speed Racer was anime. And I'm, yeah, I well, it's kind of considered, it's kind of considered <laughs> by many people to be the first anime or one of the first animes that you could, something you could call an anime, even though it was a national TV show. Right. Yeah. And it wasn't well, anime. Remember. It wasn't anime in the sense that it is today, where they run it on Japanese television, then they run an American dub version. Anime is its own special niche and still is. Yeah. Uh, but you're right. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it was. It was. Um, I'm glad that we that we started on that level, and because you, when you go into the studio today, it feels exactly the same. Mm -hmm. It's not like when you walk into Sentai or Crunchyroll, you've got reporters outside and, you know, people wanting to like a red carpet thing. It's, <laughs> but even though the movies, when they open the movies, we all just went to Dallas. A bunch of us went to Fort Worth. I, I took a bus to Fort Worth so that we could watch the premiere of Psychopath Providence or, or one of the showings of it in uh, that's a new anime film that's out in theaters right now. Oh, cool. And uh, we recorded it at Crunchyroll. Caitlin Glass was the director. I played the big bad guy and, and we went to a theater and watched it and, so, um, you know, so some of these things are it's, it's much more mainstream, definitely, than it ever used to be. You're almost like a ninja actor because not everybody knows what you look like, but they know what you sound like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, that's and that's good, too, because, you know, you don't get recognized anywhere. You don't go to Starbucks or Home Depot and get recognized as a celebrity of any sort of any kind. Right. You hated Speed Racer. I know, I really oh, like hard. What's wrong with you? Speed, Speed Racer like Speed super Racer. fun. For real. I know. I feel like it was a boy show. I didn't watch it, but I did watch uh, Sailor Moon. And then, like, I remember right. Sailor Moon and Pokemon were like the only anime I remember sure. being on when I was younger. And like, sure. everybody thought it was weird because I watched them. They're like, ew. What? Now everybody loves it. Oh my gosh, you watched that? I'm like, yeah. And y'all all thought I was stupid. Right. <laughs> <But even. laughs> right. Right. Yeah, you bet. You just oh, wait. It'll come back in style again later. I, right? When they say that, I never believed it, but no, it's totally it's true. Just, and it, it was it was such a weird, and the animation was so seventies, and it was so weird, and everything was kind of still frame. It's like you're going ah, oh, you know, like that when they were driving the car, and they had to cram all of the. They didn't have the same translators. Like when you when you record anime today, you're matching those exact lip flaps as best you can, and the writers are rewriting. I think it's I think the rule of thumb is that when you say something in Japanese, it either takes a lot longer to say it when you translate it into English. So you had to fit a lot more into those lip flaps. So pops on speed racers like speed. I designed to build that car. My bare hands. You're not going to drive it to the race. And that's final. <laughs> you know, it was just jamming all these words into these little bitty spaces of flaps. So I understand why people didn't think it was the greatest thing in the world. But it's a super fun show to watch. I mean, we watched it every morning when it came on. Sister, a big fan of anime. Hi, Marissa. Thank you. You yeah, should be a fan of anime. I think things are a lot smoother now than they were back when. Oh, my gosh. So if you watch One Piece, if you're a fan of One Piece and you need, you need so much free time to watch One Piece, even once. I've met anime fans who said, I just rewatched and binged One Piece for the third time. I'm like, you did what? Did you have like three months free? <laughs> Come on. I mean, and, and you know, there's a big resurgence of One Piece and a big renaissance of One Piece. We're getting a lot more attention now, thank goodness. Be, be, it's one of the good things, the only good things that came out of the pandemic, really, 
I mean, different things came out of the pandemic, good and bad, of course. But one of the good things for anime was that One Piece has a resurgence because people on lockdown had to have something to binge all day, all month. Yeah. And so they just started watching One Piece. Go watch the first episode. And then go watch the thousandth episode dub mm -hmm. that just got released. The animation, the animation has become, has taken the whole twenty year. I mean, such a turn. You can watch it develop and get better and better and better. Is that the longest running anime? Because like, yes. seriously, I don't know of any yeah. that's on that long. Yeah, I think that's it's the longest running anime, and it's still it's still going. <laughs> when I when I got when I was told. Uh, Mike McFarlane called me. I had done a few. Uh, <laughs> the animation was horrible to me. Um, um, <laughs> works hard is bringing is like spitting truth. He's just like I'm just going to tell She's you exactly like what her. I'm going to. You know, she'll be honest with you. Right, there you go. Go ahead and share your um, YouTube demo. That oh yeah, sure. Oh yeah, absolutely. There, you guys can check it let out. Let me let me send you let me send you a uh, or if, should I put it in the private chat? Let me put the link up for the most recent one. Okay. Where, where I, I have is where I spelled everything correctly. From 2020? Yeah, but I redid it in 2021. Okay, yeah, put it in the um, private Let's one and I'll pop it over here. Da, 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 da. Um, but that way, people, if people aren't familiar with it, they can kind of look it up. Because it was kind of, I've talked to you, I've seen you, I've got multiple um, autographs of yours, but actually seeing the anime with it connected and hearing your voice in it is really wild because it is so fluctuated. And a lot of them like, is that really him? Yeah, oh, that's well, you're talking great. about like not seeing the people's faces and not knowing who does the voices. Like, I just found out the other day that a character from Vampire Diaries was voiced by the same guy who was um, Cat in the Water, and I'm just like, was oh my god, that makes total sense. Oh, what is his name? <laughs> oh, he did Cat Noir on uh, on Ladybug and Cat Noir, and okay. um, who was it? And Can't help you. Oh my gosh, hold on. Yeah. All <laughs> right, all right. <laughs> While we're finding that out. Yeah, I just sent you the link in the private chat. Most recent John's demo. There you go. Right. Ah, it's not again. <laughs> uh, wait, where'd she go? Jillian, where'd she go? Jillian says Bryce Pennenbrook. Bryce Pappenbrook. Pappenbrook. Is that who you're oh, talking about? So you, yes, it. Thank you. Oh, my gosh. Yes. Because uh, uh, somebody has them coming. I don't know if it's Bell, uh, Bell City Comic Con. Oh, I said that wrong. Like, no, I, it, it says I can share my screen here with you guys and show you the demo if you want. Sure. I mean, right. sure I, can, I can do it. It's up to you. Oh, yeah, you can do it. If you've got it and you want to do it, you're more StreamYard uh, literate than me. You can go and share that link and do it. Sure. Okay. Give me just a yeah, second. Yeah, it's, it's got stuff from VH. It's got stuff from VHS. It's got stuff from ADV films. Oh, cool. My hijinks. Try not to be so dazzled that you avert your eyes as your favorite scoundrel shows off his talents. Gentle criminal at your service. My quirk is elasticity. I bestow said property to anything I touch. And I do mean anything, even the air itself. Gently rebound! <laughs> what is your burden? For what do you wish to gain power? Tell me, weak one. You're certainly ferocious, I'll give you that. The moment you step foot in the kitchen, you're responsible for producing extraordinary food. Any dish that is not an A will be viewed as an E. And that, my friends, is a failure. I may not respect your sorcery, but that hasn't stopped me from learning it. For a man first in atomic equations, a few circles were easy enough to understand. Your arcane rules mean nothing to me. I'm a man of science! Go back to your master and tell him this. You are but transient guests on this planet, fated to return to the darkness. Ah, oh, come now on! You ought to be ashamed, all of yourselves! Why look you like a bunch of little girls? You should be able to crack walnuts with your butt cheeks! <laughs> Everyone! I know the credibility of this threat is questionable at best, but maniac gorilla groups cannot be measured by the yardstick of common sense. We will carry out the mission at the request of the Barugan government. Is that understood? We at Scotland Yard are more than capable of handling this case, I assure you. There's no need for you to interfere. This makes 20 victims so far. And you still haven't caught this criminal? It pains my soul! It's all right. It's all right. Let it out, my little pups. Hello, I'm 
Optimus Prime. I am here to end the battle. I like your new look, Minjatron. What the hell? No! Ah! My name is so feared that all the bureaucrats in the capital clamor to stay in my good graces. It's time for a little enhancement. Water dragons, conquer heaven! <laughs> Your brave spirit was never meant to be tied down. It is my wish that you live your life freely from this point forward. And now, dear viewers, I must say cheerio. Until next time. Gentle video. See you next time. Woohoo! Wow. Nice. Yay. Yeah. So yeah. Full, me yeah. Is full metal jacket, is that the one? Uh, no, full, metal, full Metal Panic. Full Metal, full metal Panic. And he got Full Metal Panic. Like, is that really John? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so, the rest of them I recognize, but that one was, <laughs> is that really him? <laughs> couple of stories. couple of stories. Are you talking about the guy who was talking about cracking walnuts with your butt cheeks? The guy who was like the big. Uh, that one is funny, but the yeah, he's funny. Other he's one, the okay, so, so a couple of funny stories about that. The, the guy who was saying that, the big muscle dude. Stephen Foster directed that one, and none of that script was in the original translation. We, we showed up at 7.30 in the morning because I had to be at work at 9 a.m., so we did a 7.30 session. Tired, trying to, and I gave him a whole different voice because it was, behold, the beauty, the beautiful body of people who work out and blah, 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 and the, the masculinity of the blah. And he said, thank you, works hard. And, and, he's, and he said, no, I don't like this. I don't like this. And he, he said, give me a minute. He went out, smoked a cigarette, took a break, came back, rewrote everything, Gave me a Hans and Franz accent. Ta started talking about cracking walnuts with your butt cheeks. None of that is in the is in the. I mean, none of what he said in that in that anime in that episode was in the translated script or the original Japanese. I mean, none of it makes any. But it fit. He just he just made him a wacky dude, and I had this crazy laugh and all this. Other stuff. So, um, the other thing that was uh, weird. God, what was the other story I wanted to tell you about that? What, what else was on there? We yeah. had, oh yeah, oh yeah. Panty and Stocking is on there because I originally didn't have the Panty and Stocking character because he's got four lines and then he disappears and he's dead. <laughs> but everybody trips out when they heard I did Panty and Stocking. You did Panty and Stocking, oh my God. So thank you, uh, James Guy. So um, what happened was I went, to an, I went to an 18 plus panel one night at a convention. We were all talking about different roles we played uh, and I would get, oh, I played Hawkeye, me, Hawk in one piece. You might know me from that. I got a couple of these, you know, oh, I played general criminal. Oh, cool. General criminal. And I was in this and this, and what else have you done? Oh, this, this panty and stocking. Ah, everybody just went crazy when I said panty and stocking. So right. I said, okay, I guess I got to go put that on my demo reel. So I slipped that in there. <laughs> That's the new version. Cause, cause it has to include panty and stocking for some reason. They just got a second season. I hope I get to do some wacky characters on that because that's gonna, that's gonna rock. Um, what else? Oh, yeah. So talking about One Piece again, speaking of Harry Potter, you'll you'll dig this. If I never told you this story before, how I uh, came up with Mihawk's voice. No. OK, no. so I Mike McFarland knew me from uh, I got in touch with Mike McFarland once I heard in 2004, 2005 that that Funimation was a was a studio that people could go and record. Uh, I went to Onicon, Onicon's first uh, first iteration of Onicon. Saw some of my friends there, hung out with, you know, Greg Ayers and Monica Riel and all these people who were when Tiffany Grant and, and was there and, and Matt Greenfield. We all do these panels. They had me sit in on these free panels and we signed autographs and stuff like that. Way back in the day, 2003 or four, when autographs were free, <laughs> I can, I, yes, I can believe One Piece is on its 1000th episode. It's awesome. So um, I, I met Mike McFarland. I called him. He had me audition over the phone to play something in, in Galaxy Railways. Then I did Trinity Blood and Basilisk, and, and I did a full metal uh, voices and stuff like that. Then he had me do uh, Mihawk. He called me to do Mihawk, and I walked in in 2007. Never knew it was going to be the thing that it is today, that I'd still be recording that 14, 15 years later. And he... Uh, I saw Mihawk and I thought, okay, four kids has done this before. And they had him, they gave him like a French voice or a Spanish voice or a, he's not a Spaniard. He's not a Nico Montoya. What am I, what kind of voice am I going to give this guy? Yeah. And I had just seen a Harry Potter movie. So I thought of Snape. Oh. 
and I and I can't do Alan Rickman, but you know, you you imagine Snape as that voice. He's very you know British, and then I took away the British and kept it very nasal and sly, like that, like he's above it all, like he's a snake. I and like that's it. that's Mihawk's that is Mihawk's voice. That's what I do. I, I, so, I, you can hear the snark in there. That yeah, must there's all the, yeah, you know, very, yeah. You, I wanted to give him a, I wanted to give him uh, some snarkiness, and I so I thought, okay, let's do Snape without British, and let's kind of twist it from there. And Mike liked it, and we kept it that way ever since. That's so awesome. How many characters yeah. in total do you happen to know that you have? I don't know, but you know what? You know what's kind of interesting, and I think a lot of anime voice actors who have been voicing stuff for years, like me, have will tell you the same thing. You can, if you wanted to, and you researched it, please don't, you can find like four or five voices that sound like my Mihawk that are in different shows <clears throat> that are the nasal dude. Then there's voices that are low and gruff. Uh, um, let's see. Do I have the One Piece film Red Blu-ray? No, I do not. I need to, I need to watch Red, actually. I want to check that show. I just want to check that one out. Um and then there's a bunch of voices that sound like my deep authoritative guy, my my evil guy who runs the corporation. I've played that 43 times. Uh, you know, all this. You can find if you look, okay, that's John's voice. And, and a lot of times I, I, I would get frustrated because I'd walk into the studio and I'd go, man, I don't want to sound the same every time. I hope this is a different voice. So I hope there's an accent like General Criminal or, or Roland Chappelle, or I hope there's an accent that I can be wacky or funny. And I'll walk in and I'd say, and directors today, especially, they either need to know you really well to know what your range is to give you something different than your own vo sounding voice. Like I've might, got a bass, bass baritone voice. Most of the time I walk in, I go, hey, what does this guy sound like? Oh, it's just you. I'm like, don't, you know, because I don't want to sound the same. So but but that's what's going on with with anime being mainstream too. We like it or not. Directors have people set in their minds about this is John. This is what John Grimion does. This is what Lucy Christian does. This is what John Swayze does. This is what they they pretty much have us nailed as to what we can do and what they're going to cast us as, mm -hmm. based on we've got so much talent out there. If they need somebody to sound exactly like this, they can find it exactly like that. They can find an actor who sounds like that naturally. It's too much work maybe to say, hey, can you come in and sound like right. If they don't know what your range is. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So they either need to know you really well or they just need to take a chance on you or something. And, and that's not going to happen as often as it used to. Because when you have a small pool of talent and all this anime to do, you've got to have your actors stretch and, and bend. But that's part of being a professional is, is being able to go into a voice booth and go, you want this? Oh, I got that too. Oh, you want that? Oh, you want me to dial it in like that? Yeah, I can do that too. They'll hire you again and again because they know that you can step in there and just go, what do you want? I got a, I got a trick. I got a trick bag, you know. I, I know time's getting short, but I want to ask one question real quick about a character specifically. In Food Wars, you had the French accent and everything, yeah. which, uh, but the attitude was it inspired by Gordon Ramsay? <laughs> well, you know, not really. I mean, he is kind of the French Gordon Ramsay of that show, but it wasn't really necessarily inspired by that. I just knew he had to be rude. I just knew, you know, all these chefs are rude. French chefs especially are all haughty and rude. And that, that's been happening throughout history way before Gordon Ramsay was even born. You go to Paris, you meet a chef, he's in your face and he's haughty and mean. He yells at you. <laughs> I didn't, did you get this right in the souffle? You know, I mean, that, that's going to be that's going to be a thing. So yeah, probably yeah. not. I don't think it was inspired by Ramsay specifically. Do you have Food Wars Blu-ray? I do not. <laughs> I have a, I, wait, I might have a Food Wars Blu-ray. I might have an entire second. I think they have the second season on Blu-ray. Yes, I do. Yeah. Not so we have, we have about a minute left, actually. Yeah. Left. Oh, okay. Wow, time flies. <laughs> I know that, that the voice acting is not the way it is now. There's just so many. If, if there's somebody who is interested into it, what kind of advice would you give them? The best advice that I always give people at panels and everywhere else in podcasts, everywhere I go, is to take acting classes because it's all about acting. It's not about the voice. The voice is the icing on the cake. If you think, hey, I can do impressions, well, everyone can do impressions. Mm -hmm. Every stage actor, every voice actor worth their salt, they can all do different sounding voices and they have range. If they're worth their salt, they have range. So yes, we want to hear that you have range, but you need to put a demo reel together that shows that you have acting skill that you can bring. If you walk into a booth and you've had no acting experience, it's going to be pretty rare that you're going to find somebody who can really turn on some emotion and put different things and dial different emotions in behind 
behind the voice. It's really more about acting than voice. That's the best advice I can give. Take acting classes, do plays, do musicals, do improv with your friends, do pretend, make believe stuff, just anything that gets your creative juices flowing. So that when you get into a booth, you can do good improv. You need to be a good improvisational actor. Mm -hmm. I know I've heard before that some of the best lines in movies and stuff were not in the They script. were one-offs, yeah, yeah. Or moments that happen moments that happen in movies that are really spontaneous and people think, wow, how'd they do that? They couldn't have directed that. They probably didn't. I do not do this professionally, but I can do a lot of different voices with or without accents. Since I have sang all my life, I was shocked how hard it is to sing in another voice. You're right. Singing, singing in another voice takes some work. I've done Broadway. I've done uh, shows with people where they do this accent when they're speaking. When they sing, they have to do it whole different. They have to shift and do a whole different thing. And they say, "I can't put the accent on top of my singing voice. It's hard. It's hard." <laughs> so, so next week, eleven thirty. Yes. Remember, we've done this time change thing. We're now at eleven thirty. <laughs> We're going to have Stephanie Naldoni speaking of singing, talking about awesome. Um, so, Works Hard wants to know how do you sing another voice sounding believable um how do, how, how do i what sing in another voice sounding believable it's hard i don't know that i really can I tr i'll try you know I mean, if, you, if 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 gordon ramsay was going to sing something gosh i don't know what could i sing I <laughs> now i'm stuck you know uh, singing is just sustained talking like the music man says you know you just you just take a note and you sing it and you, nah, nah, nah. so if you <laughs> So if I was a British person and I wanted to sing, you know, just remember the two, the voice like that, you know. But it's 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 tough. It's it's tougher. Um, <laughs> so like I said, we're gonna stop you all done next week. John, you are a treat as always. Thank you so, Thank much. You so much. Um, really quick, um, I know I'm gonna be seeing you at Anime Oklahoma next yes. month in September. Where are okay. you going to be for those? Really let's quick, let's, let's just moment. let's just look it up so I can. Uh, do, 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 do. Let me see here. I will tell you exactly where I'm going to be. Um, I've got Anime Town, Louisiana coming up uh, August 18th through 20th. That's in a couple of weekends from now. Cult Classic Convention, September 2nd and 3rd in Baton Rouge. So that's two Louisiana conventions, two weeks apart. Wow. Anime Oklahoma, of course, September 8th through 10th in Shawnee, Oklahoma. Ancient City Con, September 15th through 17th in St. Augustine, Florida. And then finally, back here in town, Anime Houston, September 22nd through 24th. There are other uh, anime conventions that I'm still working out uh, the contracts for, so I can't talk about them publicly yet. Mm -hmm. There's some things that are coming up more uh, after September, but September is crazy busy. Every weekend I've got a con, so there's there's uh, I can see a lot of my uh, some new fans. So I'm great that I'm going to Louisiana for the first time and Oklahoma for the first time, and then back to Florida for like the second time. I just did Bold City out there. We're going to do Ancient City. So that's going to be super fun. Love, love going to cons and love seeing, love seeing folks. If you want to look at my social media, the best thing to do is just go to johngremion.com, all lowercase. It looks like Gremillion. So johngremion.com. At the bottom of the page, click on that little or scan, that little um, thank you very much. Uh, great to meet you, Works Hard. Uh, thanks, for, thanks for watching. Um, but that bottom thing, thing at the bottom, you click or scan it, it takes you to my link tree with all my social media. I do not have a Twitter because I don't like Twitter anymore. But I've got a TikTok and Instagram, all that good stuff, YouTube. So check it out. Definitely. And for those who are Thanks listening, watching. that is johngremion.com, www.johngremillion.com. Yes. .com. Yes. And you can find out more about him. Unfortunately, we are over time. Like I said, you're always a treat. So really appreciate Thank you. It. Thanks for having me again. Um, so until next time, Mommy, get your Thank wine. Thank you for joining guys. And... So let's say mischief managed. Bye. Yay.